Hello YouTube, we are back for more Stationeers. So we're we're still coming to grips with the new thermodynamics update. Uh, as you can see the temperature in here in the workshop is 18 Celsius. That's below our target temperature. I have some theories. I think maybe these wastelines are uninsulated and therefore radiating heat. But uh, we'll have to deal with that in the future. However, there are a couple of quick changes we need to make. Uh, and of course, our main project is going to be getting the user interface for our advanced furnace set up. So that should be that should be good. I think we're ready to go on. There is something that I have recently become aware of. There's nitrogen in here. And whenever we're in here with our suit helmet open, that nitrogen enters the suit and there's no way to remove it. So we're going to put a nitrogen filter in there and save that other CO2 filter for later. So, let's get our suit turned on and uh, head out. I think the first thing we want to do is fix our radiators, actually, because the new thermodynamics update has brought new radiator types, and we're using the wrong kind currently on the workshop as well as our hot waste tank. Oh, another thing, since the update, I've noticed, and this may not be related to the update, but I've noticed that I've been going through my suit oxygen and filling my waste tank very quickly. But I've noticed that the suit's target pressure is set to 101. So let's, uh, let's bring that back down. We're using pure O2. We want to go for about 50 kilopascals. I think if I set the target to 66, uh, well, let's go up a little bit. There we go. That gets the suit to 50. I'm not sure why it's so far off the target, but it is what it is. Okay, now I've heard reports that these uh, black body radiation radiators don't work properly when when they're touching a frame. And there's no frame under these, but I'm not sure. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Uh, but right now, that's not a major issue because the enemy normally is heat, but right now it's actually not. As we can see, these these are passive vents. They have Atmo from inside the workshop in them. So this is probably where our heat loss is primarily at. However, uh, we'll, we'll address this later. Let's head over to the uh, Atmo farm and fix that hot waste tank. Okay, so that's got that. Hopefully in the future these work a little better and maybe a little faster. Uh, let's 
take a look at the uh, the main project for the day. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to move these displays over here to this wall. And I'll double check them, but actually these consoles and cards, they remember their settings. So I should be able to move these easily without having to reset everything. I think we have all the parts we need. I'm going to go ahead and take these because we're going to finish out this wall, but we're not going to close it up. And I want these temperature on the left, pressure on the right. So each of these is going to get reversed. We're going to go ahead and pull the glass out of all of them. Yeah, it's got him in place. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'll work. While we're at it, let's rename these. Time to wire it up. Okay, let's uh let's test it out. Those numbers look correct. We're gonna verify everything with the data disk. Looks good. All right, let's pull down some of these frames. Clean this wire up. Another thing I want to do 
Uh, I'm going to make a bit of an improvement. We're going to add an indicator light to this circuit to show the status of the furnace. And we're going to move this over to this side. That'll give us room to put our control panel here and give us a little more feed distance if we have to put in larger stacks of ingredients. Okay, that's got that in place. I'll we'll need to do some rewiring here in a minute, but uh, let's go have us a sip. Alright, so let's go ahead and clean this wire up. And we need to get this hooked in too. Let's go ahead and clean these up. I think we can safely say we don't need those anymore. This doesn't really need to be hooked up, but who knows? There might come a time when we want to monitor that. Okay, let's go around back and tie that in here. Kind of a tight fit. seems okay. Gonna need our laptop here. And we're going to make a quick adjustment to this. So the only thing we're really changing is I've deleted a bunch of white space because we had literally used every available line. And we're adding some, uh, some commands to change the color of that LED based on whether we're over temperature, over pressure, over on both or under on both. And green if we're good to go. And we had an extra 
device connection left. Let's go ahead and give this a good name. And there we go. Now we're currently bouncing all over the place. There's no frame for it, so we have no insulation at all. And even with a frame, we do have a little insulation, but not like perfect insulation like it had been. So it's bouncing all over the place, but we can put an end to that. Now it's showing as being over on temperature and pressure because I've set them both to zero for the targets. And while that carries on, let's get ready to set up some displays here. And we'll need some input controls. We want to go ahead and get these connected to the furnace circuit. We've got two gas displays that'll give us our temperature and pressure for the furnace and then a hash display to show us what the recipe hash is for the furnace which will let us know when we're ready to extract whatever we're making in the furnace. And all that is as it should be right now because we are at zero temperature and pressure.
Okay, let's go ahead and close these frames up up here, at least for a moment. We're going to use this to control the user interface. And we're going to program it here. And in an effort to keep things clean, I'm going to use a blue cable to connect these. Now this IC is going to take the recipe and then send the desired temperature and pressure to the same memory chips that control the furnace. We're just going to connect to the other side of the chip. I think that's mostly got it, but we got to bring power to it. And we want to put our fuse in here. Hopefully this will be concealed. I think that's good. We'll go hydrate and then we'll get on with the code for this. All right, so not wanting to reinvent the wheel, I am going to be using some code for this that's not my own. Cows are evil has a, uh, a script that writes to the stack which is, I think of like hidden memory on these IC10 chips. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use that. We may have to tweak it. We'll mm -hmm. come back to that. But we're going to use that to, uh, to set the stack. And then we'll use our own code to handle the selection. Because ours is not quite as advanced as his. We're not requesting raw materials from storage or anything like that. So let's take a look at that. So first thing we need to do is we need to load in his stack writer. 
and what this has is it but the stack is a series of memory entries in a specific order and you can access them by index so what we'll be doing is writing to the stack and what's interesting about that is you can write to this write code that edits or adds data to the stack and then write new code to the chip that doesn't overwrite the stack so first we're just going to take this this is the unedited version of his code export it to the chip turn it on to run it and that runs the code that writes the data to the stack now that we've done that I'm going to load my own UI user interface control code now what does this code do uh, we've got the temperature and pressure memory modules that we're connected to we've got the dial the button to make the selection and then the console to display what we are selecting we're also using some memory registers to store the minimum pressure and temperature or the max temperature and pressure which we're not actually using right now and the hash code for the target material we're trying to make what type of alloy So the first thing we do, we have a yield to give it some breathing room. Then we load the dials setting variable into the stack pointer, which is a special variable name, SP. We multiply that by nine because we're not starting at, each entry is essentially a certain number of lines and they're all the same number of lines so if we multiply by nine then we'll get us pointed at the correct entry and we're also adding five to it because there are five lines that are skipped essentially and then the pop command loads these variables these aliases that we set up before it loads them with what's in the stack where the stack pointer is pointed and increments the stack pointer so it loads one, points to the next one, loads it into this register, increments, loads the next one, and so on. Here we're storing into the housing of the IC housing the value of the hash code for the ingot that we're trying to make. So that will be stored as a as a variable on the housing itself. The reason for that is the console can now read that directly from the IC housing. Then we uh, load, this is, this is something, well, we load into register zero, the value of the push button, which will be zero unless the button is pushed. If it has been pushed, it'll be a one. So if it's equal to zero, we just go back to the start, start the loop over. If it's not equal to zero, we continue past this. Uh, here's a bit that I sort of bodged in because, as I understand it, the stack settings in Cows or Evil's stack writer defaults to having the, temp uh, the furnace set to stay hot all the time for basic smelting, smelting just plain ores. However, with the new thermodynamics update, keeping the furnace hot all the time would be continually using fuel, and we don't want to do that. So what I've done here is, if the setting is zero on the dial, and we have pressed the button, then we set the temperature, and or, or we jump to the standby section down here. Otherwise, if it's not zero, then we set the temperature and pressure as per what we pulled out of the stack. If it is on the zero setting on the dial, we set the temperature and pressure to zero. That way the furnace can be vented down to nothing. 
And that's pretty much it. It's a fairly basic bit of code. The most complicated bit is basically pulling out of the stack that Cows Are Evil created. And again, because of the new thermodynamics update, we may have to go in and make some changes to the values that his stack writer is creating. Because, well, we'll, we'll see when we get to the testing phase. Oops. I'll put this in, turn it on. Get our error code. Now we set up our devices. The temperature target memory module. The pressure memory module. The dial itself. The button. And the console. And that really doesn't need to be connected to that because it's, we're not writing to it from the code. All right, so we've got it turned on. Let's turn this on. That points to the IC housing. We need to set the maximum value for this dial to 10. which gives us a total of 11 possible selections, including the zero value. Now if we set it to one, we get steel. And all the way up to Hastelloy. So if we set it to steel, and then we commit it, now we've set the temperature target to 950 Kelvin, and the pressure target to 2200. And as you can see, the light goes green when we're at target pressure and temperature, but we don't stay there very long, and that's, again, because we're losing temperature pretty rapidly. I think we can go ahead and seal these up. We're going to leave this open so we can access these memory modules because as it stands this is not quite where it needs to be. So, as we can see, we're, we're able to get to the steel temperature, but we're not able to hold it. It keeps having to pull from the hot tank. But what we can do is we can test this out. I've got some ores that I mined before. Let's try dropping some steel makings in there. And as we see, as the temperature gets high enough, it pops up the steel ingots here, but right now we're too cold. It's just not able to hold that temperature like it could before. And this means that our sort of janky furnace code is in even more dire need 
of being reworked. We'll come to that in the future, though. Now, one thing that's different is that in the build that Cows or Evil did, he set his code to look for that recipe hash on the furnace, and when it matched what was selected, it would automatically eject the ingots. And I may need to do something similar to that. It's not complicated to do it, but very short on space in that program for the furnace control. This is really struggling. Nope. Just in time. Let's throw us some more steel in. So while we wait for that to get back up to temperature, we can go ahead and do some cosmetics work here. Hydration critical. really taken a while to get up to temperature again. There we go. There's a little bit of wiggle room because this is targeting for 950 Kelvin, and we only actually need 900 Kelvin. So let's go ahead and vent this back down. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna run and hydrate. And then we'll come back and give it a real test with some Stellite. Well, here's something I've just noticed. This won't do at all. We're going to have to rework the way we do our radiators, I guess, because that just looks stupid. Anyway, I guess back to materials processing. We're minted back down. Let's go ahead and set this for Stellite and see what we get. I believe Stellite's the hottest of the alloys. It needs 1.8 thousand Kelvin, which is uh, pretty spicy. And the temperature target is currently 1850. That is simply not going to be hot enough. Uh, the temperature range is, I think, between 10 and 20 megapascals. So in both cases, the uh, 
Cows are evil stack rider is putting it just a little above the targets. I think we're going to need to increase both of those. One problem, too, is my janky furnace code is uh, reaching pressure quickly, and that slows down how quickly it reaches temperature. We'll go ahead and set this temperature to 2000. And we're going to set the pressure really low to start with so that it vents out this not hot enough gas. And then we can refill with more hot gas. And we'll go with 15 megapascals. There it is, still it. So it worked. Let's give it another go. Waste tank caution. Oh, whoops. That's no good. Have to close the mold. Automating that would uh, eliminate that problem as well. Let's go ahead and drop off these empty mining belts. Well, all the ingredients are in there, it's just not hard enough. Let's drop the pressure and then bring it back up. There it is. So we can still make stellite. We just have to mess around with the temperature targets. So what I may do is I may go in to the stack rider that Cows are Evil created and modify those values to something that works a little better. But I think I want to hold off on that until I can get a better handle on the actual furnace control code because again it, it is rather janky but for now we've got a, a working user interface looks a little neater in here not sure what we're going to do on this side i'm going to leave this open for now as i mentioned before this will probably be enclosed if no other reason than we have duct work here, or uh, shoots. I don't know if this whole wall will be brought over. I can't bring it all the way down because this is here. But I could always move this somewhere else, I suppose. It's a little bit crowded, though. This section may end up being information related to, say, mining rockets. Uh, although I think there's some bugs with those right now, so... Not sure when we'll get to mining rockets. But for now, that looks pretty good, I think. And again, we'll figure out what we're going to do with this space later. It might just be storage. I don't know. Let's, uh, let's consider this, uh, a success for now. It's always a work in progress, uh, especially this right now. But I think that'll do us for now. That's uh, probably a good place to call it. 
I'd love to hear more thoughts and input. Uh, have had a suggestion from a viewer to use a PID controller for this furnace, and I've done a little research on that, but I'm not not ready to fully dive into that. But that's probably the way we need to go. But that's for the future. For now, uh, I'd love to hear from everybody. Uh, I love getting comments on the videos. Let me know what you think about the video itself, the format, the length, uh, what projects you might like to see in the future. For now, thank you for watching, folks. We'll catch you next time.